This episode of Grounded in Maine is sponsored by ESG Review. ESG Review magazine is published quarterly in February, May, August, and November, and is available for free in print and digital formats. ESG Review is devoted to environmental, social, and governance strategies, technologies, and investments. ESGReview.net is updated every Wednesday with eight new stories and is home to feature articles, news, items, and more. Visit ESGReview.net to stay informed and help us spark the collaboration and awareness needed to develop sustainable economies and communities around the world. There's a place where there's no trouble, no more pain, no more struggle. Grounded in Maine podcast is an open conversation about how we show up for the world. I started this podcast out of a desire to learn new ways to be sustainable because the word sustainability is big. It's, it can be overwhelming and um, I just wanted to learn, you know, different ways to try to be part of the solution and not feel like it's too late. So I am talking to people who are doing, doing different things and learning so much. I hope that you are too. Hi there. Thank you so much for listening to Grounded in Maine today. My name is Amy Fagan. My guest today is Andrea Canny, who you may not know, but I think you should. Uh, I love Andrea a lot. I, I met her in early 2022 when I was learning how to be a podcaster. I went to a retreat in Florida and Andrea was part of the team there. She was the producer of two podcasts, uh, 10K Dollar Day and The Daily Happy and she was working with Lulu and Allison, who are the hosts of those two podcasts. And Andrea and I just really hit it off. We have a lot in common. She lives in Cincinnati, which is where my sister lives. So I've actually been there. And um, she is currently living at her parents' house in Cincinnati and taking care of the gardens and doing a lot of cooking and you know all the things that I enjoy doing. So she has this uh, this really great, idea plan that we wanted to really give some oxygen to and and kind of brainstorm on air uh, because it is super exciting and I think it's really really needed so I'm going to let her tell you about it but please know that if you have thoughts if you have suggestions if you have you know ideas that she could um yeah include um you know, people she could talk to or, you know, thoughts on what could uh, enhance that. Anyway, um, so just listen to the podcast. And if you have suggestions, uh, let her know, let me know, and I'll share them with her. Uh, she really, really wants to make this happen. And I really, really want this for her because I want to go <laughs> to that place. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoy this. If you enjoy it, please feel free to share it with somebody that you care about that would enjoy it uh, or have ideas to suggest rate and review wherever you're listening to get this in front of new listeners if you really don't like the podcast please let me know because you know if i don't know that you're not getting value i can't make any changes and this is that's my plan so um if you have some grand idea that you would like to brainstorm on air or if you have something that you're really proud of sustainability wise or if you have something that you just want to share please let me know that too um, I am always looking to talk to people about sustainability stuff and I'm thrilled to share this with you guys I love this idea and I really 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 want it to happen so um, enjoy this and thank you so much for listening have an awesome day my guest today is my friend, Andrea Canny. Andrea, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. How are you? I'm well. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Oh, my gosh. Same. Um, Andrea, Andrea was um, in the, when I first learned how to podcast a year and a half ago-ish, um, I went to a workshop in Florida and Andrea was part of the group. Andrea was a producer of a podcast, actually two podcasts. 
and um, and now she's living in Cincinnati, which is where yeah. she's from. And um, Andrea's got some big plans that she wants. She was, you know, she was mentioning to me, and I was like, let's see if we can put some oxygen, give this some oxygen, and get it out there, and you know, maybe brainstorm and see if anyone has anything to add or suggestions or you know anything like that. So. Andrea, you are in Cincinnati. You're staying at your parents' place, actually. Um, mm -hmm. And you have been gardening and cooking up a storm and all kinds of stuff. But you have really big plans for that. Yeah. I mean, it right now, it's definitely a blue sky idea because... Um, it would be a it would be a huge project, but I love producing big projects. I just have to figure out logistically, budget wise, how I would make it happen. But it's been after spending thirty years in Orlando and overseas, and you know, I, thirty years in Orlando. I think I was away from Cincinnati for thirty four years. I, I haven't lived here since the eighties. So uh, during COVID, you know the way things happened with the entertainment business, I ended up having to move back home. And I, I was very, very lucky that I had that luxury that my mom still has the house that I was raised in. Not for my entire childhood, but the majority of my childhood. And it's on two and a half acres in Cincinnati. And my dad was a huge gardener, always, everywhere we went, everywhere we lived, we always had gardens. And so I was raised with uh, that whole mentality of reduce, recycle, and reuse before it was the cool thing to do, right? And my dad wasn't a hippie. He was just an Iowa boy who was raised in Wisconsin. So that's how he was raised. And he loved it. You know, he was a systems analyst by trade. And when he came home, he couldn't wait to get into his scrubby jeans and his, <laughs> he used to, Ha there used to be a cartoon character named Croc, and he had this Croc T-shirt, you know, like in the Sunday paper, you could get a, I'm dating myself right now, uh, you could get these iron-on things, and so he put it on this T-shirt, and oh man, I think I still have the T-shirt, but it is so threadbare, <laughs> but he, you know, he loved spending time in the garden, and of course, he made us kids, you know, or basically his hired hands that weren't paid, that had to help him and everything. And I wish I would have learned more. I wish I would have listened more. Uh, but oh, I don't. Don't we all? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but I did have the luxury of being raised in a family where we grew the majority of our produce. We didn't, there wasn't a lot that we had to go to the grocery store to, to purchase produce wise. And so we would harvest everything. We would freeze and we would can we would share with our neighbors we would take it to the free store my dad even thought he would cure my shyness by making me sell produce out in front in the front yard didn't really work because i'm no good at math and i had to do a cash business <laughs> it, was, it was not fun not fun but yeah, so I was just raised with that um, luxury of having, my dad had at least six gardens and we had an orchard. And so I've always had an affinity for that. And I almost have like a produce problem. Like I really just love produce. Being a single person, I have to curb myself with what I purchase because I'm only one person, right? Mm -hmm. So, but I love it. But uh, yeah, so I, I'm here in the family home and even though a lot of it is overgrown, I've so loved being able to, you know, witness nature. I We have groundhogs, we have chipmunks. We I got to watch these robin babies grow and that ha they have a nest up in our, our porch, my front porch. I got to watch those grow. I got to rescue, rescue a squirrel. I think it was last year. Sadly, somebody got them. Uh, somebody got them. There was evidence. It was heartbreaking. But we have deer. We have uh, fox. We have coyote. So I literally sit here and I get to look down what we call down back. And it's a hill down to the majority of the acreage. And I see so much nature and I love it. So they love it here because a lot of it is grown over, you know. 
Um, they don't really have a garden per se to steal <laughs> produce from. But almost magically in my dad's the side garden, which is to the side of the house, it's all overgrown. But when I walked my dog out there, I noticed, I was like, wait, there's asparagus growing. And it's, I mean, it's been a long time since dad had a garden here, you know, because as he was getting older, he stopped gardening years before he passed. So, cause it was just too much time and effort. It was too hard on his body, but it's, it's almost magical. Like it's still popping up, which is, I, and it was tasty. So good. But I have my flowers out front and I grow from seed and I, I always have my herbs, but I I'm loving having my flowers and, Last year before I went to go do a gig on a cruise ship, uh, a wonderful, wonderful friend of mine um, sent me a bunch of bulbs. And so before I left, I had to dig through the really hard earth because we had no rain in a while. And so I planted all these bulbs. So this luckily this spring, it was not ruined by an early snowfall or a, you know, or a late snowfall. Mm -hmm. And so I got to see all these bulbs come up. So it's been so nice to be in the North, you know, environment again and see the, the seasons and watch the trees and all that stuff. But yeah, so I kind of came up with this concept, this blue sky concept. When I just, I don't know when it happened. It was months ago, but I've real since I've enjoyed so much this being back in this environment and then realizing that locally when people have sold their properties, they've been turning them into different things. Like across the street used to be a cow pasture. It was a farm. Now it's a neighborhood. And behind our property used to be a fish farm, a family that I went to school with their kids and um, they had their own furniture business and a fish farm when they sold now it's apartments so i just looking into the future don't want this beautiful plot of land to turn into some living thing even down the street on the corner there was this beautiful big house that these two i think sisters or something lived in and when they died it got sold now that's apartments or condos now too so i just don't Nothing, I, I get it. People need to live somewhere, but I really think it's important for people to have, and for the environment, to have these beautiful respites mm -hmm. for the animals, for people, for oxygen, for God's sake, you know, to have more trees. Right. Please have more green. So the plan is when my mother passes, which hopefully won't be anytime soon, she's 95, but the plan is the house will get sold and it, the profits will be split five ways. I've never been a homeowner. I don't really know anything too much about it, but I was sharing my concept with a friend of mine in Georgia that is a very successful real estate person. And he was like, well, you know, it was like, if, if you're going to get a fifth of the house, that's 20%. So that's that's like a down payment i'm like oh because my concept was oh let me find some organization to buy the house then we can split it between people and then have an agreement a contract with them that i'll be in charge and he was like no you should you should own the property and then link up with an organization so I, it just started making me think of it a little bit differently so the overall concept is this and i feel like i'm talking so long <laughs> So if you, if it's an exciting to... thing. It's really uh, exciting. I, and the more I, I the more I hear you talk about it, the more excited I get. Yeah. I I get excited about it because I figured this is one I think it would be something I would be passionate about, right? And I would be able to take the skills I've learned as a producer and wrangling people and I'm a natural born connector. So I know that if I talk, you know, and I'm so grateful for you having me on because I want to talk with like-minded people who might be able to help me make this happen because I think it's a pretty freaking cool idea. Um, we were not only raised with 
of the reduce, recycle, reuse mentality, but very much a family of service, you know, and so when we had our produce, we would can, we would freeze, we would share with our neighbors. I, I would be selling out on the front lawn and my dad and I would go to the free store and drop off things like when we grew tomato, uh, potatoes, like potatoes, tomatoes, anything that was an Edo, when we had those zucchini, good God, cu cucumbers, you know, there's only so many pickles you can have in your pantry. And for me, I'm like the more the merrier. I'm a big pickle fan, but, Same. <laughs> but you know, it was very important to our, my, our parents to, to share, you know, and, we were lucky enough to have the land to and dad having the interest in doing it, but it wouldn't have been as sweet if we didn't get to share it with people too. So my idea is I would love to be able to purchase the house and, you know, basically buy out my siblings, right. You know, get them the, the split that they mm -hmm. need. Um, and then I would want to create, uh, a, I, I would assume it would probably be a nonprofit. I don't know, but like an organization where it would be about sustainability, agriculture, and education. And there are so many people in the Cincinnati area that, you know, live in parts of town that do not have access to fresh produce or don't have the income to buy fresh produce. And and they don't have access to any land to grow with themselves, even if they knew how to. So I think it would be cool if I could link up with somebody who does know all that information about the sustainability, like how to make the cha the necessary changes to the land, you know, of like, where do we want to keep it? Because I don't want to like clear it out, just have gardens. That's it. Right. I want the animals to still have a lot of area that they can utilize, you know, because when we first moved here, we had a pond, but it was not taken care of. So it was so filled with silt that my dad eventually found out how to, he researched how to drain it. Mm. And so we still have a Creek down there. Um, but that stuff is so overgrown. It's like, I hardly ever go down into it because mm. it's a lot of ducking under low trees and stuff and bushes but there is still a creek down there i would love somebody who knows all about that stuff about let's come up with a grand plan of what's going to benefit the animals what's going to benefit give us the room and access to the the soil in order to have different gardens in different places and my goal would be to bring have a program to where we bring in children from these areas and we mix it with it's education but it's a whole bunch of fun you know bring them in for the afternoon and say we'd have lunch and we'd say okay today for lunch we're using this list of produce right let's teach you how to cook some of these things we teach them how to cook it we all eat we have a good time they play outside they do some stuff and I'm like okay also today what we're going to do is we're going to plant the seeds for those plant those that produce that you had just lunch. Ate, yeah. Had, yeah, just ate, right? So this is how we're going to plant those seeds. We do that. Great. We teach them a couple other things, send them on their way. Great. Go home. They come back at another time where it's like, okay, guys, this is the progress. And, and this is something where I'm thinking we could also, if they have access to the computers, you know, they could, we could, have a Facebook group, you know, and show them the progress. This is week five of the, the seeds or week two or whatever. And, and then bring them back and say, now it's time to put them in the ground again here. We're going to cook a lunch with some of the other produce, you know, that, you know, this is another meal you can make with this. <clears> produce. <throat> and then let's go plant them, teach them about how to do that. How do you water them? How do you weed? How do you do all this kind of stuff? Do more games, more education, send them on their way bring them back another time where it's like, okay, now these are the things you have to know about. Um, now it's time to put up cages around the tomatoes or for our beans. And these are the things, just teach them all this stuff, but make it super duper fun. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, cause they can even just the backyard, they can roll down 
the backyard. I mean, you know, kids are kids. I, they, they need to be able to be in nature and enjoy themselves. Teach them about the birds, anything. Something. Right. I was thinking um, that too, like identifying the bugs and the birds and stuff like that. And, mm -hmm. um, and I, I mean, an herbalist could come and like teach people how to, mm -hmm. um, identify, you know, the different weeds and what they can be used yep. for and that they're not just for mowing or whatever. But, yeah. <clears throat> There's I somebody I follow on TikTok, Alexis Nicole, and she's a forager and she is incredible she's just so vibrant and funny and i just adore her i just would love to meet her and i just think it would be so cool if she could come down for one mm -hmm. of those and be like you know come down she could stay with me and then just like walk her around the property and go tell me what you find and then bring the kids and and then she's just so vivacious she's incredible and and see what we can do about that, you know, yeah. teach them about the trees. There's so much education that they could learn. Like you said, I love that about the bugs. I remember when I had to do a bug collection, it was like a freaking cornucopia of bugs. I have tons right. of bugs. Um, and we actually have like our old chicken shed is, well, was until last weekend when my brother-in-law came and chainsawed a lot, a lot of stuff, but like overrun with a lot of grapes vines but i just oh. don't know like i was like i could get rich off of these these leaves you know but i don't know if they're edible ones or not you know what i mean so mm. like having somebody who can tell you that because i'm like i'll i'd harvest them sure i'd put them in i'll get a big vat of olive oil and sell those would be great um and then so so bring the kids back at these various stages right and then the big coup de gras would be if that's the right phrase the big hoity-toity thing to do would be bring their families for harvest right yep. so those of us who work here or whatever would be harvesting some of this stuff prior so we can make a great barbecue we're like guys this time we're gonna make lunch we're gonna you know you guys go out take your baskets have fun you know you can play games or whatever but go harvest and you guys get to keep what you have in your basket they get to take that home and then give them recipes you know we could even bring them at different times to cook things just cook meals and these are different ways that you could we could do canning we could do freezing we could do all the preservation like the whole thing like you probably do with the eggs like i'm allergic to eggs but it's fascinating that you can put eggs in water what, what is it like salty water or something like you can store them for months at a time oh lime i think it's lime lime yeah you know, it's like things like that. I just find that stuff so interesting. And I wish we were more about that in the world, because I think the fact that we've gotten away from it has caused so much downfall, um, including cancer. I mean, come on, you cannot tell me that the amount of produce that we eat from places that have spewed chemicals all over them that you know, if you have to plant an extra garden so that the groundhogs can eat and you still have a harvest, then just do it. They're so right. cute as hell. Like I'm <laughs> looking at the window waiting for them because Fatsy and Patsy need to come up here and visit me because I love them, you know. Um, so that's that's my idea. That's, that's my awesome. big blue sky idea. That's so exciting. Oh my gosh. I mean, I just, I, I want to be there. <laughs> I <laughs> want to come. come visit. <laughs> yes. But, Your sister um, could be our chef. Oh. Ooh. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. yeah. And we could even, you know, this is the thing. Like if you, if, if we had to turn a profit because, you know, I, I need a job too, but you know, if we needed to turn a profit, we could do retreats here. We could do, um workshops we could do things that were for profit but i just really want it to be a a place of service and education mm -hmm. you know while we're being better to the universe i mean plant a butterfly garden i mean just earlier today i was sitting out on the front porch because it's gorgeous by the way it's 74 degrees um and I have all my flowers out there and every once in a while, not often because I don't have a, a feeder, but every once in a while, a hummingbird will just come up and they, they say hi and then they leave. Cause I think they see that I'm there and they're like, oh wait, that's a person. I gotta go. 
Oh crap! It's it's not empty. <laughs> yeah, it's not empty. I'm not alone here. <laughs> I am not alone. But yeah, I mean, it's there's so much that can be done, and I think it would be really, really cool. Yeah, to create this like paradise for people to learn. I I've had so many conversations with people and like you know kids need to know where their food is coming from that it's not just born in bags in the grocery store um yep. like how it gets to how it gets to be ready to eat and how you know how that all happens and you know what you can do with it i mean i yeah i didn't grow up with that but it just is it's you know thank goodness some people are seeing that but it's it would be so much fun for you it would be so much fun for them. It would be so great for the animals to have, Yeah, I'm not going to say company, but, you know, to, to have it stay. I mean, to think of the, the apartments and the neighborhoods that are going in, you know, those people are not going to be able to plant big gardens and stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, it could be just a neighborhood thing even. Um, yeah. But it would also be a really cool retreat place. Like. Yeah. I mean, because I was thinking like, the way the way it's formatted is i mean we have a huge front back uh, front yard um so it's a total of two and a half acres but behind the house is a three-car garage which has a loft so it's huge and that itself if we could fix if we fixed it up i mean the roof is pretty great still um if we could fix that up that could be a place where we you know, have artists retreats, like people come in, let's work on art, bring your easel, let's, or we have a couple easels, whatever, do some stuff in there. I mean, that would be really, really cool. And, and then there's the old chicken shed, which just needs to be torn down. I mean, it's so bad. And the fun thing is, is that I think it's the raccoons that, um, I'll tell you a quick story. So my mom and my mom was up with me and my sister Mary was spending the night with us. She had just taken a shower. She's already like in her pajamas. And I'm at the kitchen window, which looks out to the back where the you see the garage and the chicken shed. And I said, and when dad died in 2017, all the siblings, all five of us came a couple of different times and we filled dumpsters with, I mean, my dad was the king of saving stuff and he was such a garbage picker. He had that whole long it's a long shotgun building. He had that organized with uh, display cases from any store that was throwing it away, any display thing. He had jars from whatever we ever bought filled with screws, washers, whatever, you name it. Everything was organized, but it was just how much wood so much, does one yeah. man need who's not a woodworker? Come on. I'm just saying, Jack, come on, <laughs> get real. So we filled a couple dumpsters. Anyway, so the, the place is, for the most part, cleared out. But the floor, like when you first walk in the door, the one, the bottom part of the door is almost like a doggy door because the door has disintegrated down there. And so that's where the cats, uh, the stray cats and the um, groundhogs and raccoons, whatever, or anybody who wants to go in there, that's where they go. And, but then there's a hole in the floor right there when you first walk in. So we have not been in there since 2017. But that particular night, I'm washing my hands at the kitchen sink. And I was like, Mary, did you go in the chicken shed earlier and leave a light on? And she was like, I haven't. No, I haven't been in there. I was like, well, I haven't been in there. And I said, and there's a light on. <laughs> and I said, I don't want to go in there. She's like, I don't want to go in there. She was like, I'm okay if you want to call the police at this point. I was like, let's do it. Because it was almost dark. So I called the police. They come out. And long story short, it's got to be a varmint. Got to be some sort of varmint that switched Turn the, the light, light on? Yeah. Because whoever installed the light, which must have been whoever, you know, started that chicken shed, did the toggle switch upside down. <clears throat> so when the light is on, it's down as vice, you know, as opposite of what it should be, right? Or what we were raised to know. So, <laughs> so the light was on and I was like, and the cops looked all through there and there was nobody, nobody Definitely in there. Definitely no people. No people. And 
it's happened twice after that, but I noticed during the daytime. So I went in and I, I really think it's just like somebody comes from above and they flip Drop it down. down because you wouldn't be flipping it up. So I think the raccoons like to have little parties in there or something. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh you know, they're pretty quiet so i'm not gonna complain too much now that i know it's not an intruder <laughs> the neighbors are quiet the neighbors are pretty quiet <laughs> other than the dogs you know but I, I think it would be cool to like take the chicken shit out as long as we don't die of like asbestos poisoning when when it gets demolished and then if i could get the permit i could maybe make a not tiny tiny house right like not tiny. Be a not tiny tiny house i don't need a tiny house but like one that's like part studio like for me to do any art or performing stuff you know rehearsing or taping um but to have like an art studio as well as i don't need a huge space for a living place but then you know make a nice little courtyard out there with lights and stuff and uh fire pit those kind of things it would be really cool and then the main house could be all about the organization you know, mm -hmm. and and if if we needed to keep the bedrooms or at least one of the bedrooms uh, for, uh, you know, when visiting guests that are going to help us with if they need a place to stay, then we can make sure that one of them is definitely um, a room. But I mean, the, it's a typical Ohio house, ranch house, that the basement is the complete footage of the house up above. So there's plenty of rooms down there. Mm. So. Yeah. I mean, it could be uh, like a community kitchen or something like that. So people could, pres it would, oh, so many possibilities. Like, yeah. you know, people that grow their own food, but they don't have the means to, you know, they don't have the right stove or whatever to can it or, you know, something like that. Or even, so for me, for, for me, my my phrase is community sufficiency and i know that you would be totally into this but like yeah even just gathering together to preserve things together like pickles I love or that. pickles or tomatoes or whatever like if you don't have to do it all by yourself yep it goes so much faster and maybe you don't need 100 jars of pickles but you can share them with your helpers or whatever yeah. um, or you or you have a crop that you have plenty of that and somebody else has a different crop that they have too much of and then you share it. I love that idea. I yeah. love that. And, and it's true too. Like if um, it could almost be similar to the, the format that my, my friend Sherry Rikers, incredibly talented artist, and she created, she was on the front end of creating what a lot of people do now is uh you know, bring a bottle of wine and she would have a canvas. And I actually have a painting that I did at one of her classes where you, you know, it's already sharpied uh, the shape of whatever you're painting is already on the canvas. And then you're, uh, it's up to you to paint it. If you want to do it as accurately to the original, it, that's great. If not, then do it your own you know <laughs> if you, you want to stay in the lines cool if you don't yeah if you cool. don't if you want to paint over it and paint whatever you want then just darn gone do it um but it could be similar to that too like hey su a saturday or sunday afternoon bring we'll have mimosas and canning you know cocktails and canning oh my and the, gosh andrea and the fun thing is is what's my last name canny ah, hilarious Come on. I freaking love alliteration too. Oh my gosh, that's it's awesome. Cannery. <laughs> and then we have to we have to have the um when I lived in Winter Garden, Florida, I had <clears throat> this beautiful, nice long backyard that was I had access to with the garage apartment I was in. And so I had um the production company I used to work for, they had these stages that they were getting rid of these two big panels that they were getting rid of and i was like if you bring them to my house i will put them on the in the backyard and then i got a like i don't know it was like maybe 130 bucks from big lots a canopy you know with a zipper thing on each side or whatever yeah and so i put 
a, a table and chairs that I, I found on the side of the road or whatever in there. And I strung lights in there and, and we called it Candy's Canopy. And so when people would come visit, we'd celebrate birthdays out there. Gus and I would go out and we, my favorite thing to do was um, when the baby birds were doing flight training, flight <laughs> practice, because it was such, it was so overgrown. There was tons of ferns. It was, it was, it was beautiful. And I, I, I had woodpeckers, I had cardinals, I had blue jays and I was, it was awesome, but I loved it when the babies were doing flight practice. I was like, you can do it. <laughs> I was trying to be quiet, but encouraging at the same time. <laughs> so I love that idea. What would you call it? A community? Like a community kitchen? Oh, community sufficiency. Sufficiency. It's, I got to yeah. write that down. So instead of like, um, you know, a lot of homesteaders will say, I'm self-sufficient. I don't need people. You know, I can do everything right. on my own. Community sufficiency, take care of each other. Oh, I mm. love that. Oh, my gosh. Because honestly, it's just so much more freaking fun. I mean, I'm a, I'm an ex, I'm an extrovert in the definition that I derive my energy from other people. Like it does not serve me or the world well for me to spend too much time on my own. Not that I can't, but I just can't spend too much time on my own. And even though I come up with ideas on my own, I love brainstorming. That's why I would love to have a team of really cool people that would come in and I would love, like, I can't remember what his name is, but he's from Los Angeles and he's the, the gardening gangster, the gangster gardener. I got to oh. look that up. Hold on. Let me see what his name is. I took <laughs> his master class during the pandemic. <clears throat> um, the gangster gardener. Yeah. Ron Finley. Hmm. Ron Finley, he is fabulous. And he, he started that when he was in Los Angeles and he started by making a garden out of the, the grass in between the land that's in the soil that's in between the curb and the oh. sidewalk. Oh, I reached out to him. Oh yeah. He's fabulous. <laughs> yeah. That's genius. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. And yeah, and I, and he, I can't remember if he got arrested or almost arrested, was threatened with arrest or whatever, but I took his master class from that cool. format called for master class or whatever, but it was just fascinating. His story in general is fabulous, and he was like, look, it was like, people here don't have the produce. If they want to come help me weed, if they want to come do this or whatever, they can do it, and it's exactly it. It's the, he was looking out for his community, mm -hmm. but now I, I like, gosh, how cool would it be? Bring him in here. Grounded in Maine podcast is thrilled to partner with True Leaf Market. True Leaf Market has been the choice of over a million growers for heirloom and organic garden, se garden seeds since 1974. The end of the gardening season is here in the Northeast, and it is the ideal time to rehabilitate your garden soil by growing a cover crop. Cover crops have been used in agriculture for, for thousands of years as a way to naturally and sustainably improve soil quality. Cover crops add organic biomass to the soil, keep soil bacteria healthy, add nitrogen and other nutrients, attract pollinators and beneficial insects, improve soil structure, prevent erosion, and so much more. Cover crop seeds are incredibly inexpensive, under $25 for most backyard gardens, and that includes shipping. <laughs> Uh, growing cover crops is, is skyrocketing in popularity with, with home gardeners and is the biggest bang for your buck in improving your, the health of your garden soil. Simply plant at the end of the garden season and let winter kill or terminate the crop. Mother Nature does the rest. You can get a free PDF, Beginner's Guide to Growing Cover Crops, at www.trueleafmarket.com. Just search for Cover Crop Guide. True Leaf Market offers a great selection of cover crop seeds, including their all-purpose garden cover crop mix. True Leaf Market also offers a huge selection of seeds, growing supplies, and more, including indoor growing starter kits for micro microgreens, herb gardens, and sprouts. Order online at trueleafmarket.com and use promo code GROUNDED10, the number 10, to receive $10 off any purchase of $50 or more.
limit one use per customer, expires November 15th, 2023 at midnight. I ordered a whole bunch of stuff from True Leaf Market and I'm so looking forward to it coming in. Um, I ordered some stuff for next year as well as some cover crop stuff, obviously, uh, and some uh, micro I want to start microgreens and I want to try sprouting. Um, I got some cool stuff for that and uh, I'm very excited. They have everything. <laughs> uh, definitely check that out. Remember the grounded 10 uh, discount code and have fun shopping. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it would just be really cool. And we could even do, maybe we could even do retreats where we bring in corporations like a uh, um uh team building retreat right bring them in here for a, a main time where they get to learn these different things and see how we can you know and that could be part of my job as a you know person in the entertainment business figure out how we could i mean we wouldn't be housing them here because we don't you know it's not we're like we're a dude ranch but <clears throat> you know find some way to make build it into team building but also some sort of lesson for them so that they can be better leaders or uh be better at their job you know yeah that could be, that oh could my be gosh. cool so many possibilities that's so awesome oh my gosh how exciting is that everyone <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, so if you have, if you have ideas to share, if this inspires you, it would be so cool if somebody else wanted to do this somewhere else, like, and do like, not like a chain or a franchise, but just like, you know, team across the country or whatever, and like share ideas and you yeah. know, stuff like that. So if you have thoughts about that, if this jazzes you to death, like you just need to be part of this in one way or another, um, I want you to contact Andrea. Yeah. Uh, or contact me and I will contact Andrea. <laughs> I'll get you in yeah. touch. But, yeah, because um, I mean, the, because the reality, the reason why it's a blue sky goal for me right now, or idea, is I don't have a full time job. You know, I'm piecing together whatever kind of work I can, um, and I don't have the money to buy this house. You know, but I also believe that if people are really passionate about something, that that you know, it can it can work. I even had a friend who also does real estate or is knowledgeable about real estate is certified and all that stuff. That's not what she does for a living. But she said that she was like the first house I bought, I bought with an investor. And then we started buying houses together. So I'm like, whoa, it's stuff I didn't know. And I wouldn't have known that had I not brought it up to her when she was here visiting, you know, right. so it's intriguing. I, I, I do care about this land, but I also want to make sure to me, I also had the idea, why not make it a reality show? Call it legacy land. Again, with the alliteration, I know I'm annoying, but Annoying Andrea. <laughs> See, I just did it again. Um, <laughs> I can't stop. I can't stop it. I can't stand it. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, you know, call it Legacy Land. And if they're, if people are, put, if shows are putting those, I, I used to watch that show with Ty, whatchamacallit, the guy who yelled all the time. Good looking. Oh, guy. yeah, yeah. Home Improvement? Um, no, not Home Improvement. No, it was Something the one like where that. they were like, move that bus. I used to watch that show all the time because it was inspiring. But the reality for a lot of those people were that, that they, they also did not have the income to sustain the power bills and all those different things afterwards that's why they started paying people's mortgages and stuff like that right so um right but i think this would be a really cool way to just inspire the rest of the world to preserve you know we were not the first people on this land we all know that but right. to preserve what nature is supposed to be about it's sustaining us and right. us giving back you know? preserving the green space and yeah i mean yeah. what better what better subject for a reality show i mean if we're not going to be like completely ridiculous and yeah unrealistic just like you know how about yeah let's grow things and learn how to preserve yeah, <laughs> yeah. i mean a lot of i i spend way too much time on tiktok but the majority of the, it's either dogs frankly, or naked cats, you know, hairless cats, um, or gardeners. Do you follow Red Leaf Ranch at all? He's in Tennessee. 
he is a fabulous gay man, which, you know, I love more than life itself. Um, it's a fabulous example of someone who just derives so much joy from growing stuff. Mm. And he, he lives in Tennessee. He's a former model, fashion model and photographer from New York City in New York City. But I don't know. I don't know what brought him to Tennessee, but I'm so grateful for him. And his tagline is abundance. And now his mom lives there. I can't remember if he's Puerto Rican or if he's from somewhere else, but he's bilingual. But like he's got a chicken that, oh, what's what's his name? He's got a rooster that I think before he knew it was a rooster, he called it a girl's name. But uh, oh, Olive, he was, you know, he'll be talking about stuff and he was like, then you'll hear the rooster and he'll be like, shut up, Olive. <laughs> shut He's up, hilarious. Nick. Shut up. But my, like, if, if, it, if it were a guilty pleasure is watching people harvest produce out of their gardens is my guilty pleasure on TikTok. That, that ranks very highly up with dogs. I just really get jazzed about it. Right. I freaking love uh, of it. Right. Love it. Same for me on Instagram. I, yeah. I follow yep. all the gardeners. Yep. <clears throat> yep. It's, cool. it's fabulous. So. All right. So, <clears throat> all right. So you're in Cincinnati, Andrea, and you are, you're an actress. I am. And you do all kinds of stuff because you produce podcasts. You've you, I, I do a really... lot of different things. I mean, that's what happens when you're 57, especially as an entertainer, is you've had to learn how to do a lot of different things because there's not always work. I'm in that phase of my life where I am overqualified mm -hmm. and I've struggled for the last three years finding any kind of full-time work because I'm also in a different demographic now, you know, as an actor, um, I left Orlando because there was no more work for me everywhere I applied, um, you know, would not have me. And it's most likely because I was overqualified. My favorite one was when I had an interview for Publix to work at the deli department and I didn't get it. <laughs> and the, you think I can't make a sandwich? Oh, um, look at look at this fluffy gal she likes a sandwich she likes a, a dagwood sandwich um, but i just had to chuckle because i was like i'm not gonna say anything to him but up to all my friends i was like oh i may not be able to work you're not gonna hire me for the deli but you know you just freaking enjoy watching me at play a deli manager at publix in your freaking training video so there boom uh <laughs> As I literally do, like I, I would have been watching myself, but no, I didn't get the gag. Uh, but you know, it's, it's things that I'm very qualified for, or just about any average human is qualified for. I was not getting because one, when you're a woman and you're older, you're invisible. Mm. Two, I'm overqualified for a lot of jobs, even jobs in the arts. Um, I had. Uh, an interview that I thought was going really, really well, but I ended up, it was for two jobs at a local organiz arts organization. And the I didn't get the gigs, but the comment was, and we everything was going great. We were really doing well, but she was like, well, I, I hope you realize that these positions don't require 30 plus years of experience. And I said, oh, certainly not. I said, but it sure couldn't hurt, could it? Right. And she was like, oh, well, no. I'm like, okay. And then with the salary, you know, she was like, well, it's not going to be commensurate. To I was like, I get that. I commensurate to my experience. I'd love to come in at the top end of this budget wide, you know, salary range, but you're not going to get 70% of my effort based on what, if the salary is 70% of what I think I'm worth. Um, so it's just a very interesting time of life where I'm realizing it's my time to create my own stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I've started a virtual assistant business that, again, it's a lot of stuff. So I'm having to rely on friends who know a little bit more about how to present that to people without overwhelming them, you mm -hmm. know, but <clears throat> there's different categories. Like I, I help people with uh, the tech aspects of like, editing the, you know, how to start a podcast, editing the podcast, social media, uh, graphics, video, 
uh, written word. I, you know, during the pandemic, I've proofread uh, novels for friends that have published their own novels and uh, proofread and edited uh, scripts for that are being published, things like that. Um, ideation, creative ideation, people who need just someone who's got a brain that thinks out of the box like I do. I can't help it. It's just how it happens. And so various aspects of my experience, I'm now putting it out there that if people need that help or even the instruction, like I've got a friend I've been helping and I'm a pretty, pretty darn patient person. I was lucky. My dad was a systems analyst. So I, we had a computer in the house in the seventies, you know, dad created a software program for me to test myself on uh, genus and phylum and stuff for bi biology. So I I've been around a computer for decades. So there's a lot, I'm not an expert by any means. I'm not a IT expert or techie, but for people who really don't feel comfortable in front of the computer, I can help them become more comfortable, you mm -hmm. know, and empower, I do well with people. So there's all these various things that I can offer to people. So that's, that's one big project that I've been working on is uh, creating my own virtual assistant business where I either teach people how to do things or I just do it for them. Yeah. Wow. And also um, trying to act and auditioning for things. And, and that. fun fact, guess what I auditioned for last week, what I had to videotape myself in. I can't even. What? Tell me. Mm. Hmm. I usually like to do make blooper reels out of my auditions because you do a lot of takes. This one, I, I just can't do it. I can't do it to myself. It was for always discreet underwear. For, you know, pee pants, adult yep adult pee pants that my mom wears, you know, she's 95 though, I'm 57. I had to do that. I had to videotape myself in a bra and black pee pants. They're, they can be very attractive. I've had so pay, many ads pop in front of my feed lately. It would pay $27,500. I would take their money and <laughs> not I, even feel bad about that. Not even feel bad about it. I'd be like, I don't care. You want a fluffy lady in some pee pants i'm your gal i'm your girl that's right <laughs> I'm your gal wow that's cool wow and that's another thing too like if you mix the idea if i get this up and running i could create my own reality show and just do it on youtube for god's sake you know and just document the whole thing because i, I can host heck yeah i just freaking document the whole damn thing and then maybe we'll get some big sponsors i, I don't know i just would love to see it happen you know, but Me I'm too. also highly aware that I am, my dog's staring at me right now. Um, I'm, I'm highly aware that I, you know, I've never owned a home. I, I don't know my way around this, but I'm willing to try, you know, I'm willing to try because I really don't want this beautiful land to get turned into freaking condos or apartments. I just don't, right. I really don't. It would make me so sad. He's old. It's his sundown time. I guess. Aww. Yeah. Don't pave my paradise. Yeah. Oh, yes. Thank you, Joni Mitchell. Mm -hmm. Always. Um, yeah. So, Andrea, when I say the word sustainability, what does that mean to you? And I know it's a big word. It is a, a big word. To me, <laughs> it's just been, it's just been my life. Like, I am, I am not a person who, um, you know, dumpster dives and can live without producing any garbage or carbon footprint. I'm not at that level, but I feel like it's just the only way I want to live life is in a, a more sustainable way, you know, because of the way I was raised and because of how, I think some people don't realize how beautifully creative it is, you know, like a couple examples, like my dad, at the time, I thought he was weird, whatever, but he wasn't. He was just creative. Was, you know, like you get those those red mesh bags, like apples or oranges come in. Yeah. So, you know, five kids and a dog and two adults on one income, right? For the majority, until I was 12 and I was the youngest. So mom and dad, I don't know how they did it, but man, they they made it work. And one of one of my jobs was to 
cut off the tag, you know, the paper tag at the end of it. And he would have me fold it over into a square, fold it over into a square, and then I'd have to sew it all together. And that's what we would scrub pots with. Yeah. And when we had our orchard, we had uh, um, apples. We had deli red delicious apples, but the birds would like start pecking at them, you know, and mm -hmm. so he didn't want that. So he would have me take my mom's, you know, knee high, you know, we would have old knee highs or whatever, and old, like an old margarine top lid or whatever, and cut a hole in the top of it and have me put that over each one of the apples so that the sun could still get in, but the birds would be like the, the lid would hold the hose mostly outside of the apple hmm. and then they'd be less likely to peck it. Wow. Every apple. So, yeah, every apple. That was <laughs> my weekends. You know, um, my and we had a, a catalpa tree over here when we first moved in. And when it you know, died basically. And it's still there over on its side. Like, you know, most of it's cut, but my dad had it left over on the side. And he ended up when we had, you know, when he had grandkids, he put attached a plastic, you know, play slide on it and the stairs and everything for the grandkids. So it's like, to me, that's sustainability. Like that's a thing that he could have cut up and we could have burned it. Right. Or we could have dumped it somewhere. You know I mean? It's like, but it's part of our legacy. It's part of our history here. And it still serves a purpose. It gave like, it a new life. Yeah, it gave it a new life. And th that creativity, I think, is at the heart of sustainability because people back in the day, before Maine society happened, they had to live a sustainability li a sustainable life. They had to because there was no other way to live or survive. Right. And that creativity to me is fascinating. Is, yeah. is that an answer? Oh, not sure. Totally. Yeah. I mean, I had a, I had a guest a few, a few months ago, um, Megan, who we talked about um, celebrating the extended life of things. Like, you know, instead of buying new jeans every year, like saying, Hey, you let those go, mm -hmm. you know, you've had those for a few years now. Good for you. Or, you know, your 20 year old sweater, like, look at you just keeping that around. Rocking that sweater. You know? yeah. 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 Well, like part of it too, is my dad, um, again, those fabulous jeans that he always wore and everything. And <clears throat> um, so we still have some of a lot of his old jeans and he, he liked that country style shirt with the snaps, you know? And that was when he was really dressing up. I'm just right. <laughs> but, you know, because he was at work, he was always in a suit and he was the very least comfortable in a suit. But I've saved a lot of that gene because I intend on making things out of it for people in my family, mm -hmm. something that they can use, you know, whether it's a tote bag or I love tea, like I, um, my mom made me, my mom's an amazing knitter and she made me a tea cozy out of, you know, she knitted it and, and I love it. And it's beautiful. It's like a, she's English, Irish. So um, it's a cottage, an Irish cottage. And I just love it. But when I take the cozy off, the pot is so hot. I have to, I literally right now have an old white footy that I <laughs> hold the handle with so I don't burn myself, right? And I was like, you know what? I want to make a handle cover that I can either leave on there or just have that next to the cozy. Um, and so I want to make it out of dad's jean material, you know, and then I'll embroider some stuff on it or whatever that'll match the tea cozy. But, you know, things like that. Mm-hmm. You know, and people people do that in memory of people all the time. They make quilts, that, things like that. But I, I think that stuff is so beautiful mm -hmm. that you yeah. can it it holds the memory, and it also serves a purpose because you know, Jean doesn't die, right? <laughs> Jean material does not die. Yeah, I mean, then you'll you'll have a little bit of him. Yeah, you know what he loved with yep. you, and that would. Yep just mean so much for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So 
yeah i think that's a great i think that's a great answer shoot um so if somebody is interested in being part of this plan or has ideas or just says andrea is so cool i want to follow her around um how could someone find and follow you where are you well, I do have a website, which is www.andreacanny.com. And that's, canny is uncanny without the un. There's no E in canny, <clears throat> in my canny. Um, so there's the website, which, you know, you can always contact me through the website. You can kind of look around on there. Uh, uh, I have a lot of work to do now. I, I have to add the virtual assistant stuff to it. I'm still in the process of that. But if they want, if they're interested in me doing any virtual work for them, then they could email me at acannyva at gmail.com because I'm what? A canny virtual assistant. <laughs> and, um, but if they... <laughs> <laughs> I got to entertain myself. I obviously spent too much time by myself recently. Um, but on Facebook, I have, if you just put in my name, Andrea Canny, there is a page. I have my personal page, but if they want to go to the, I hate to call it a fan page, but it's basically anything that's not just like a personal friend with me kind of thing. Um, they can friend request me there. Um, on Instagram, which I don't do a ton of stuff on there. I am pup butt, P-U-P-B-U-T-T, -T, because puppy butts are my happy thought. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And, uh, and then if they want to email me for anything else, it's just Andrea L for Louise canny at gmail.com. Okay. Yeah. Facebook cool. is what I usually I'm on Facebook absolutely every single day. I check my email all the time. Instagram is the one. If you message me on that, I probably won't get it right away because I just don't check it as much. But there's some fun stuff on there. And if you want to follow my dog, the mayor of Plant Street, the mayor's pretty funny. He's now he, the baron. He checks it every so often, too. He does. Every once in a while. He gets angry that I do not check it more often and don't post more often. But he's the baron of Blue Rock now. So he's a very busy boy. <laughs> he's probably in the other room taking a pee on something or something because he wanted me to take him out <laughs> oh well oh my uh awesome that's so cool it's so cool to catch up with you oh my oh, gosh so and i'm so psyched about i am so psyched about this plan thank you i really 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 want to make it happen i just think it would be super cool and could be a lot bigger than I think it is, but that's why I really would love a team of people who I could trust. That's the issue is people I could trust to make it work, mm -hmm. you know, because I really love being part of a team. And I also love being a team leader. Like if I get, you know, when I produce fundraisers or gigs or whatever, <clears throat> if I get to put the team together, that's my favorite thing because I know those people with those skills and their integrity level that I can trust that it's a no brainer. Mm -hmm. We come together, we put the plan together and we make deadlines and plans and all this stuff. And, and I all I have to do is check in and be there to do what I have to do. I don't need to micromanage anybody, but I would definitely need a lot of help with that. For, I don't even know what to call it, a program organization. I'm not sure quite a cool ass plan. That's what I'll call That's it. That's right. <laughs> The cool ass plan. I got Candy's cool ass plan. Man. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I can't stop myself. Oh my God. <laughs> What's wrong with me? <laughs> I'm annoying oh my myself. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're the coolest, Amy Fagan. Oh my gosh. I think you're the coolest. I just want to take a moment and thank my guest again for speaking with me and sharing such great information. Uh, I also need to thank Buzzsprout for hosting this podcast, for Jane Bolduck and her amazing music genius, for Becca Coffron and her beautiful artwork. And I'd like to thank you for listening. Please check out the show notes. Um, I'm going to have links posted in there if you would like to follow this guest and learn more about them. Thank you again.
We'll talk to you soon. There'll come a day My mama told me When I find love To have and hold me A heart that's strong And so sincere Just tell me how do I get there from here? Oh, tell me how do I get there from here? Cause here and now I'm so far down that mercy's bound to find Signals will heal the age with sweet forgiveness. Wages of war will disappear. Just tell me how do I get there from here? I wonder. Tears and one.